Radiant Team Pick. Welcome to another cast by Gilga. Uh, I want to apologize in advance. I might sound just a tad bit sniffly. I think I might be coming down with a cold. Let's have our fingers crossed that that is not the case. Um, but we're going to jump into another game for the Dota 2 cast it subreddit. Um, we're just going to hop into the picks as they're coming out real quick. Let me mute my, mute my phone for you guys. I apologize. And these picks are just flying off the board so far. First pick, tiny, very diverse. Um, it can go off lane still. It can go mid lane. So good pick just to be open-minded with what they want to do with the rest of the draft. And when I say draft, I mean a all pick, you know. <laughs> um, Dyer's going to follow that up with a, an Ursa and an Undying. So early game, very, very powerful. Radiant going to follow it up with a Lion. Um, ever since they changed his ulti a little bit to be able to get that bonus damage, he has been picked a lot more than he was before. Someone that is very good at just stunning and locking down multiple people across team fights if he's in the right position. Um, and that, like a finger, and uh, uh, coupled with a, a avalanche toss combo, is just, it's gonna make someone not exist anymore. And they're gonna pick their mid laner. It shows that that's probably either a, I would want to say that's an, a tiny off lane, and it's going to be an invoker mid lane. Um, but picking their mid lane pretty early. Let's see if Dyer has a way to kind of punish that a little bit with their pick. Five seconds remaining. Your turn to pick. They are going to go with an anti-mage, trying to do as much as they can to just have a lot of burst damage onto that invoker. I am sort of worried for him in the early game if he's going to be going up against this tiny. I mean, I just don't see a way that he'll be able to get light sets the way that he wants to. That is also going to pick up a phoenix along the way. And so far, the Radiant team doesn't have that great of, or that good of an ability to to destroy an egg, um, especially if it's in a good position. So, I mean, Alacrity is good, but I mean, it only does so much, especially if you have an Anti-Mage and an Ursa jump on you. Sky Radiant is going to come out with a Skywrath, another hero to just really punish the Anti-Mage early before he gets a Manta style out. I am really worried for this Anti-Mage. Uh, they have a lot of ways to punish him early. Tani with his Ava toss combo finger. Um, we have the Ancient Seal from Skyrath. Uh, it's going to be tough. But Dyer does have some very annoying team fight. They have Egg, they have Tombstone, they have Ursa. Putting those Fury Swipes up your butthole. Yikes. Radiant is going to finish it off with a Naga. Okay, so it will be a one position Naga. Something that you haven't seen in quite a while. I, I've seen it once or twice in some of my games, and I think the Riptide change is absolutely bonkers. So we'll see how what she uh, ends up doing. Dark team is going to end it with an Abaddon. And why did I just see it? What, what is happening here? Okay, they're just swapping. They're swapping. That's what it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> threw me off. So we have an Abba last pick, so it's gonna, I would assume it would be either an Abba Undying just to be annoying offlane or an Abba Phoenix to be a little safer. I think that the Radiance lanes are a little more obvious with, the, with, the, with what they're going to do. So we'll see. Prepare for battle. All right. It is in the bag. So let's take a look at what's going on here. We're going to ignore the chat for now. Phoenix is already preparing to go two null talismans. Is it a support? It's a support Abba and a core Phoenix. This is a mid Phoenix. Huh. That is not what I was expecting. I will say Abba and Ursa is quite strong. But man, I didn't expect a Phoenix mid. I don't know if I've ever seen that. 
30 seconds to battle. I don't really like these starting items by Tani. I think that he could have been a lot more efficient with his item slots. Having two empty slots going into lane I think is very poor. Might see some sort of action here. Naga Siren kind of doing the same thing. Unless Lion gets the biggest impale of his life, I think that they're not going to be able to get this rune. And he does, but it's a little early. And now Lion might be in trouble. I think they're going to be happy just, and he doesn't actually get the bounty. How does that, how does Naga get that from him? Another two-man stun coming out. He should be fine. And unless, are they really going to chase this all the way? There's no way they dive under tower for this, right? I am interested to see how this mid lane matchup goes with Phoenix and Invoker. I think that Invoker has a big way to just survive all the harass from Phoenix, but we'll see. I'm dying already going down to about a third HP. They have a lot of harass coming out here with Tree and the uh, Skywrath Q as well. So another two man decay, so he should be pretty fine. And they have to be careful because they are getting low HP. Anti Mage is pumping in some auto attacks onto the Skywrath, down to about a fourth HP now. I don't believe he's going to end up getting this kill because he did go Spell Shield level one, which is kind of weird. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't think it, he either mistimed that or it doesn't work like that one one way or another. Radiant team as a whole kind of getting low HP. Anti Mage down to about a third HP, just tanking all the Mystic Flares from the Skywrath. But there, I mean, he does he have a Mango? No, he doesn't. Okay, if he had a Mango there, he would have gotten that kill. So right now we are seeing mid lane about even. Both people are kind of not doing that well at last hitting. Two and four versus two and one. I do apologize about missing the first blood bottom lane. I'm wondering how that happened with an Abaddon in your lane. I know he doesn't have shield up yet, but maybe the Ursa just overstepped his boundaries there. As with pretty much any invoker, I do fully expect him to start out CSing the Phoenix whenever he gets a few levels up. Skyroth does need to be a little bit careful. There is still no blink on this anti so he doesn't have much chasing power, and Phoenix actually does solo die middle lane. I am just missing all of these kills right now. You know, whenever you have these type of heroes mid that you never see mid, I think that there are a lot of people who just spam mid lane that aren't used to facing it in lane mid and so they underestimate the amount of damage that those kind of heroes can output tornado does come out and completely misses he does use a cold snap but i don't think it's going to be enough gets down to about 200 hp but that is not going to be enough i've literally missed every single kill so far is this going to be the first kill that i actually don't miss and no i'm still zero for four so far guys we're going to try our best to do better here we have a lot of heroes low at one time right now. Anti Mage down to about a fourth HP. We do see one more um, Arcane Bolt able to be put out if he wants to, but he is probably getting ready to go shrine. Invoker doing his best to, <laughs> to dodge the fire spirits if he can. Anti Mage getting really low again, throws out the spell shield, should be fine, although that Arcane Bolt is going to get him quite low with the concussive shot as well. He does have the vision to finish him off. Will they get to be able to get a counter kill onto this? He misses the decay onto the Skyrath. Now that is a feels bad man. Meanwhile, bottom lane, the Abbot does fall as well. And this has got to be very disappointing for the Dire team. I don't think that they were expecting to have a, a lane that they would just straight, straight up lose with Abaddon and Ursa. We do see another engagement coming out from the Invoker and the Phoenix. The Invoker's got to be very careful here. I mean, he's gotten hit by every single spirit. He's getting very low. The Phoenix dive is going to come across, and that Invoker's going to die again, but the Tower Shot should finish off the Invoker, or the, the Phoenix, excuse me, and he does fall in the end. Meanwhile, bottom lane, we do see the Naga getting quite low. Abba's falling low as well. Earthspike does go on top of him, and he's falling low himself. Another slow coming out from the Ursa. He will finish him off, and Abba will end up living. 
another Urshak to get the Lion low as well. But Tiny is here now. Throws out the Avalanche, but the shield from Abba does go onto the Ursa to kind of mitigate that. I'm wondering if we'll see some lane swaps now. No, we do see Nugget coming down here again. Let's see if they try and get any sort of kill here. Abba is not there at the moment, but they don't have another Avalanche for 10 seconds. And this Invoker is struggling, and he might die again. He got hit by every Spirit and the dive. Will he fall again? He does. And this Invoker is just not respecting this Phoenix. We do see the Undying getting the Bounty Rune aggressively. He might pay for it. He does throw the Tombstone down, and... I'm pretty sure he just soul ripped the zombie that came out. I didn't even know that was possible. So he missed out the heal and the damage. That feels bad. He will come out with both the bounty runes, so I guess that kind of mitigates it, but... Let me see real quick. I do apologize for doing this. I'll try and edit it out in the video, but I'm going to turn off the music because it does get quite in the way of casting, I think. So hold on one second, guys. And are you kidding me? Okay. Whew! All right. Sorry about that, guys. We're back in it. Back in it to win it. So these lanes are not going how I expected them to. We, we see the Anti-Mage doing just fine up here against Skyrath and... And Tiny rocking 26 and 18, so he's having a great lane. Naga is kind of up there as well, 22 and 12. <coughs> Throws out the mirror image. Earth, Earth Shock is going to lower him quite a bit, but a shield comes out, and they might dive this. They don't end up dive. The Abbot does get stunned under tower, but he should be able to back away just in time. We do see a kill mid lane against the Phoenix, and that is something that they desperately needed because this Phoenix was causing this invoker all kinds of trouble. We do see this Undying quite low top lane. I would kind of prefer it if he just went in region. Does throw the K out. Top tower is under but at this point, he's just sapping XP for no reason. You know, with the amount of kills that Phoenix has gotten on the Invoker, I'm surprised to see him only at 19 and 11. And it, you can kind of try and say that it's Invoker doing that to him, but I don't really know if that's the case. Phoenix being very aggressive right after TPing. We do see a Cold Snap and EMP combo coming out to try and counter it. And this Invoker is already down to about 15% HP. Intimage getting a little bit harassed, but he will blink away after getting some of those last hits. And right now it's just a tail of the of the one positions getting the farm that they want. Lion might have come a little bit too far here. He does use the Hex onto the Ursa and the Earth Spike as well. The shield does come out, but a little too late for him to be able to follow it up with anything. Invoker is doing okay. Avalanche to try and save the Skyrath top lane. Putting out a little bit harassed, but he's out of mana now, so his attacks aren't going to do as much. The toss comes out onto the Antimage, getting low himself, blinks away to safety, and they both will retreat. It looks like no one will end up falling there. We do see a lot of damage coming out onto the Naga as well. She does use Mirror Image and the Net to try and keep the Ursa at bay. Ursa Spike onto the Abba as well to try and keep him at bay, but he now may have come a little bit too far. The slow from the Ursa and the Abba piling up now. And they will finish off this lion, I believe. Fairy Fire does come out. They do end up falling, but the Abba's going to fall to the tower. And now Tiny's here, and the Ursa's in no man's land. Song does come out to try and find him. You've got to be kidding. They have to find him here. Okay, they do end up finding him, so he should end up falling. Another ensnare, and Tiny rotating will finish him off. Phoenix does go aggressively onto this Invoker, but he might have overstepped his boundaries here. Cold Snap, Tornado, and EMP on top. And the Phoenix will fall. Is it going to be a trade? I believe it will, and so it will be a trade. But the Invoker is the one that gets the XP there, so not really what I would be too happy with if I was Phoenix. I mean, if we look at the net worth, Phoenix is leading the net worth chart with Invoker <laughs> a full 1,000 gold below that, so you don't want to really be just be throwing away kills to him at this point. Aggressive link onto the Skyrath just to try and get some damage on him, but the Concussive Shot will kind of push him back. I think Anti-Mage is starting to slowly realize that he has to throw out his spell shield before he casts it. Because if it just hits him, it's not going to just reflect it at that point. 
Meanwhile, a lot of information, information, a lot of action going on bottom lane. The Abba is going to get caught behind the trees. And Volker looks like he rotated to try and get the kill. I don't believe they're going to be able to find the Ursa as well because he is pretty speedy at this point. Actually rocking some Radiant's Tranquil Boots. Tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Phoenix, meanwhile, is going to clear a stack that he found in the jungle. And he is still leading the charts right now. We do see Skyrath go down top lane. It might have been a mana void from what I'm seeing. We do see Tiny trying to finish off the kill onto the anti-mage, but he is not going to fall in time. Getting quite low. Another decay just to kind of harass him. Anti-mage trying to do some BM and throw his power treads on the ground, but... <laughs> Ursa, meanwhile, is very low bottom lane. I think he should be able to get away. Shield from Abba just to make sure, and he should be going back to base there. I don't believe that is up for another 40 seconds or so, so. Top lane, we do see a, a, an Arcane Bolt plus Avalanche Toss onto the Undying. Tree Toss as well gets him very low, but the Wand Charge plus the Decay is keeping him alive for now. Another Arcane Bolt comes, comes out, and it will finish him off there. I really think that this Invoker, with how much he has struggled in this lane against Phoenix, needed to just clear the wave and go jungle with Alacrity over and over and over again. Bale coming out with the dive and the Fire Spirits onto the Invoker, getting him to about a third HP, a fourth HP. Goodness. He's going to have to stay on uh, his Quas Orbs for a little while. Anthony is getting very low top lane. And this is what I'm saying. They have a huge way to just pump out damage onto him with the with the Skyrath and the Tiny there. Abba is trying to chase down this Tiny who has no mana to do anything. But he does use the Mango and he does try and TP out. And they don't have any way to cancel it. Anti Mage, you gotta use the Mana Void there. Ooh, I, I very much disagree with that. Tornado is going to whiff onto the Phoenix mid lane. Cold Snap as well, but the egg is going to come out to dodge the EMP, and they're going to try and kill it. But Fire Spirit is making it so that does not happen. Invoker falls. The egg's going to go off. And now this lion's going to fall as well. Disaster in the middle lane. Thank you. Absolute tragedy. Man, there are just kills going everywhere. It's 11 minutes in, and we have 22 kills. I need to like cast these type of games with a pub mentality and just go between all three lanes like every second just simply because there's so many more kills in pubs than in actual games. Phoenix still leading the net worth at about 11 minutes in and I am kind of worried for the Radiant team that I did say at the beginning of the draft they didn't have an easy way to deal with the egg and with him being a core and with him having the great start he did I am going to be worrying for them. He's very tanky as well. Strength hero with a veil. Up to about 1600 HP. We do see a toss onto the Tiny, but he's going to dive in with Phoenix. Hex onto Abo and Avalanche onto. They're going to pop the Shrine to keep him living. Lion does throw his Earth Spike onto the Abo as well, trying to keep him at bay. Tiny is up to about two thir two thirds HP now. And now Naga's in the fray. We do see a Mystic Flare on top of the Ensnare with the Finger of Death, and that is a very dead undying. We do see the Abba trying to get away. Tornado stops him in his tracks with the Earth Spike on top. Toss as well. This guy's not going anywhere. EMP as well. That guy already has no mana. But he is going to fall as well in a two for nothing for the Radiant team. So that is good for them. And that's what the Invoker needs to do. He just needs to be a part of as many kills as he can right now. Because he did go a Quaswex build. So he can't really go Alacrity like I was kind of wanting him to. So that's probably why he's been in lane for so long. All the damage coming out onto the Phoenix, but he might have overstayed his welcome. Now we have three heroes here, but he is going to throw down the egg. Ursus here as well, and they're not going to be able to finish off this egg. It's going to pop onto the Tiny. He should fall. It did fall onto the Lion as well. He does get the Hex onto the Antimage before he gets his Mana Void out. He will fall in the end to the Phoenix anyway. And that's a three for zero turnaround by the Dire team, completely mitigating the losses that they had in the last fight. They are going to finish off this Tier 1 mid-tower. And they are doing their best to make space for Anti-Mage at this point. He is third, about 300, 400 gold below this Naga Siren. And I am curious to see kind of what item she is planning on going. She does have two, uh, two Wraith Talents, Wraith Bands, excuse me, going on right now. And it looks like she is getting ready to go a Diffusal Blade. So we'll see how well that works out. I mean, way back in the day, Naga versus Anti-Mage was always just like this late game, like, hour 20 minute slugfest. 
It looks like, I'm assuming that Undying is saving up for Arcane Boots with the way that he's storing about 900 gold almost. Do you see another kill that I missed? That's keeping the streak going, guys. On to Lion. And that was just a three-man gangbang from what I'm seeing. Antimage is going to deny the tower, but it looks like this Undying is going to pay for his life. Being a little out of position, it looks like the Naga got... I thought for sure she had her defusal up, but I think it was just the raw damage of the Riptide being spammed over and over. Regeneration. Antimage is going to have roughly a 16 and a half minute Battle Fury by my estimations. And Invoker might be out of position now, misses the Tornado. We do see the AMP coming out, which does hit onto the Ursa, but they do not have detection for this Invoker, unfortunately. Phoenix does not have a Kaya out as well, so really just spamming out the damage as much as he can. I would really like for him to get rid of that Mango and get some dust, which it looks like he has. He's one step ahead of me there. Otherwise, we do see Ursa, who is... I'm not even going to comment on what he's putting his quick by. I'm, I'm not even going to say it. Needless to say, I don't agree with it. Looks like there is a big fight brewing in the mid lane. And Phoenix is here. Naga's not here, but she should have a TP ready. She does. Tombstone is up in advance, so they're really wanting to put some pressure onto this tier 2 tower. They already threw it down and now they're kind of disengaging. So kind of a waste of Tombstone there. Ursa is trying to find the Tiny here. We do see Flesh Golem use Tornado and EMP from the Invoker and the Mystic Flare on top of the Undying and he will fall very quickly. And it looks like that's going to be that. We do see Abaddon, meanwhile top lane, getting his ulti pop by the Naga. And now she might be in trouble. The anti is here pumping in the damage. Use the spell shield. We do see an Earth Spike from the Lion onto the Abba and the Finger to kill the anti -Mage. And now they're going to try and find... The Abba, which they do, he tries to get the deny with throwing his Q on someone, but it does not work out. And Naga ends up changing what she's going for. She changes from Diffusal and is going to go the Radiance build. She is now leading the net worth chart, really doing well for her own for her team, uh, picking up the slack for her struggling uh, Invoker. And I can't say that I... I dislike the radiance on her i hate that ursa is going a radiance i think it makes no sense whatsoever for their team i mean if you guys see something that i don't see then let me know in the comments but i i just don't i don't agree with it tiny is struggling a little bit he is below his uh his own Skywrath. We do see, meanwhile, a Tornado plus EMP and a Cold Snap onto the Ursa with the Avalanche on top and the Toss as well. He's trying his best with his ulti to stay alive. We do see Phoenix killing Skywrath in the back lines in another lane, meanwhile. I think that was bottom lane. And Ursa will end up living with the Abba TPing in, using his shield on him, using the Shrine as well. And now they might get a turnaround kill. If they can reach this Lion, they might get a kill. A Decay does lower him to about... 700 600 hp and he will end up teeping away and they don't have a way to cancel that meanwhile we do see antimage trying to get a kill on someone they do have cold snap with tornado keeping him in place the cold snap does eventually wear off and he is able to blink away before the naga is able to get there with his ensnare So it looks like this Battle Fury is going to be delayed just a little bit longer. I am really, I'm very sad for this Tiny right now. I mean, unless, maybe he was supporting and I just didn't realize it, but like he is struggling. It looks like he was because Skyrath has 39 and 10 versus a 13 and 3 Tiny. So it looks like it was a, a Skyrath offlane core. Kind of curious as to why they would want to do that, but... And Naga already has Radiance up, and this is a huge power spike for the Radiant team. I mean, they really need to take advantage of this timing right now. They have an insane timing right now where they should win pretty much any fight that they take. Yes, they don't have a great way to deal with Egg, but if they can... It, once Phoenix eggs, you just pop your song, and then you disengage, wait for it, and then you can go back in. And the Dire team should know that the ra that Naga has a Radiance. Phoenix just being a nuisance here. does go in with the Dive and the Spirits, which is mm, probably going to pop the line. He does throw out his finger before he falls. Mystic Flare is going to finish off the Phoenix as well. We do see Ursa jumping in the back lines, but the Sun barely in time to save the Skyrath, who will TP away. 
Great job by the Naga, and it looks like they're gonna try and turn this around, just like I said. The Ensnare comes out onto the Earth, so the Aquatic Shield already has come out before the Shield came out, and that is gonna... Or before the net came out, excuse me, and he will fall. The Sunstrike in time! Not gonna be enough because it is a Quaswex Invoker. Womp womp. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Intimage has now picked up his Battle Fury, so expect him to kind of start snowballing with his farm. But Radiant have the ability to just walk all over them right now with the amount of... They just have a huge advantage right now with their team. I am very sad for this Invoker as well. He is... Poor guy. He only has 58 last hits. Oh my god. It hurts. It hurts my soul. He really just got outplayed mid lane. Really just underestimated the Phoenix the whole laning stage. Earth, why are you going Radiance, my friends? Oi, oi, oi. Invoker with his Cold Snap and Forge Spirit, but the egg is going to come out automatically to counteract that, and that Invoker is going to fall. He will end up falling. Oh. It's just like a rinse and repeat at this point. It's like... I don't know. It just feels like he's not used to playing against... I mean, I will say, Phoenixes don't usually have this many levels. They don't usually have Kaya's and Veil's at 20 minutes in. But it just seems like he's just underestimating the raw damage output that the Phoenix has at this point in the game. Their team is trying their best to try and keep the Radiant out of their own jungle. Doing the best that they can, knowing that the Radiant team has a Naga Siren who's going to try and do the same thing to them with their lanes. The Dire team need to find a pickoff onto a very important person like the Naga. Um, they, I mean, they can kill Invoker all they want, but Naga's going to be the key target for them to try and kill. And it looks like they might be trying to do that. We do see her at about half HP. She doesn't have Song up for another 30 seconds. I really just wish... Okay, now you're just fucking with me here. You're, you're just messing with me here now, Ursa. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Does have the relics, so he is getting prepared to get that radiance. We do see a tornado on the top with the avalanche and the EMP on close up as well. The Abba not able to get his aphotic shield off because of the avalanche, and the Ursa will end up falling. So not the best positioning by the Abba there to help his tiny out. I think, or excuse me, to help his Ursa out. I think that if he was in a better position, I think he might have been able to help him get out. Getting a shield off would have, would have allowed the Ursa to be able to get his enrage off, uh, but that ended up not happening. We do see Tiny with, Tiny with the Blink Dagger now, getting it even before the Ursa because obviously he's going a stupid fucking Radiance. And Radiant Team tries to smoke, and I think part of it was popped by the Anti-Mage that was there, but four of them are still smoked, looking to try and get something done. Phoenix is going back for a Radiance himself, which is going to be so much more damage with the Egg as well. Even adding up the missed chances with the Radiance onto the Egg as well. Tornado is going to be sidestepped by the Abba and the Anti-Mage. We do see a Cold Stomp getting blocked by the Spell Shield. EMP does hit with the Ancient Seal on top with the Mystic Flare, but it's not going to be enough. Fodic Shield does come off of well with the Egg. Are they going to be able to kill it in time? This might be the first Egg that we see killed. I don't believe so, though. They're going to have the ways to stop it. It's not enough one hit away, and this is a disaster for the Radiant team. They're all going to die. It's a complete team wipe. And he had the Radiance up, and I think one or two of those attacks were missed. It, the mischance procced because of the Radiance, and that ended up saving him. It was one hit away. And Naga didn't get her Song off. We saw, the, we saw the Egg go off, and Song was not used to counteract it. And we ended up seeing a lot of heroes with their ultis not used. I mean, we did see Mystic Flare, but we didn't see Finger used. Invoker died without doing too much. I did see the Antimage get a pretty big mana void onto two people at the same time as the egg was getting low. So that ended up being a huge win for the Dire team, and they're now up by 6k net worth. Skyrath is going to cancel that very uh, aggressive TP. And I'm surprised how many times this Phoenix is able to get away with just simply throwing out his dive. The Skyrath is going to fall to the direct damage. No, it won't. We do see an ensnare with the finger over the top to kill the Phoenix. The Photic Shield was tried. But it wasn't enough. And we're going to see this Ursa just run down. Now Avalanche is trying to keep him in place. He does try and enrage to block as much damage as he can. But he should fall in the end with the Cold Snap and the Radiance to try and block it over the top. We do see Anti-Mage, meanwhile, going aggressively onto them. He does get ensnared. Throws out a Spell Shield, but he might fall as well. We do see a shield from the Abba just in time to let him get out. 
Sunstruck is going to be dodged, uh, Tiny. AFKing there for a second. Whenever you blinked in, you, you okay, bro? And a lucky, lucky region in there for him. Do see another ensnare onto this Abba who does use his shield to pop it. Cold Snap to cancel the TP and he throws the song down because he didn't know that the Cold Snap was coming. So a little bit of a wasted song there. It will be down for two minutes, but they do get the kill on the Abba. And it looks like Lion is saying, I want this Roche right now. But Radiant Team is saying, you're a support. We don't listen to you. And I'm pretty sure he's pausing, telling his team, if you guys don't let us go Roche, I'm going to feed. See how Anti Mage is doing now. He ended up going back for a Vlaz before going for a Manta. I don't know if I agree with that too much. I think that the Manta is very key to this game for him, being able to just dispel Cold Snap, dispel Ancient Seal, everything like that. Um, and delaying it by 2,000 gold, I don't agree with whatsoever. Ursa still doesn't have the Radiance that he's queued up. I think that he could have gotten a lot more kills with his team if he would have gone a Blink first. They do try and gank the Tiny in bottom lane, but he does Blink out before they are able to get on top of him. We do see a Spell Shield that counteracts the Ensnare, but the Anti-Mage is about at half HP, so he can't really jump into that. And right now, Naga is way stronger than Anti-Mage. I mean, at this point, we see Naga with the Manta style up as well, going back with that Diffusal as her third item. And Invoker still not really that close to her, to his Ag, still about a thousand gold away. He does have a, have a juicy Ancient stack here, so he'll get a little closer here, but he's definitely been struggling. We'll see how well he's able to kind of help his team out after struggling so much in the early game. Phoenix at this point, still with the Veilkaya and the Radiance up. Going back for Ashivas as well. I think that is a perfect item progression for him. Very tanky, 2000 HP with 11 armor. And the, the attack slow from the Shivas is going to be fantastic as well. Again, I am surprised the amount of times that he has been able to just dive in without getting stunned by like Hex, Tornado, Cold Snap, or Spike, anything like that. And Dyer is trying to get a Roche done here. I think that Radiant is well aware though. And the smoke does pop on the Phoenix, so they should know now. Sunstrike just got it out as well, and then it's getting to about two-thirds HP now. We'll see if the Radiant team really does try and make a run at this. We do see Naga and Tiny bottom lane, though. Mystic Flare does come out, and it does pop the Ursa, who doesn't use his Enrage. We do see Phoenix pop the Skyrath in the back line just with the damage from the Veil and everything like that. Tornado does come out to try and delay this Roche even more, and an uh, EMP as well, and he's just going to have to get out of there. We do see Anti-Mage on the top trying to get Mana Void out. He does eventually get the Mana Void out, but it is not quite enough. And now he's going to fall to the Ensnare, to the Lion ulti. And a Song comes out to try and disengage. The Naga is very low herself. More of a defensive Song just to disengage as much as you can, more than anything. And Dyer is going to be very happy with that. I mean, they lost the Ursa very quickly. And they still ended up kind of in a good position. They did lose the Anti-Mage, but they're going to have the ability to Roche now. A little bit more confidently now that Song of the Siren is down. Once this Ursa is back, I would be very surprised not to see him just go directly back into Roche. I don't know why he TP to the right shrine and is jungling. I'm pretty sure the teammates are saying the same thing. Like, what in the fuck are you doing? Medallion is up now onto the Abba. Looks like he might be going... Okay, he's not going for the Solar Crest. Just simply the Medallion for the Roshing potential. He is actually... Okay. So he's going an ultimate orb and then solar crest. Did they change this? I'm sorry, guys. I have to check this. Okay, solar crest does have an ultimate orb. Shows how much I read patch notes, right? Tornado is going to be uh, splitting the uprights there, not hitting on anyone. Ancient Seal does come out onto the Ursa. He's getting very, very low. Two arcane bolts and he will fall. Okay. They're trying to get a return kill onto this. Skyrath, they will with the mana void. Earthspike will get counteracted by the spell shield, and the lion will fall as well. But a lot of damage from the meteor and everything coming out onto the Antimate. He will die to the deafening blast. We do see the egg coming out to try and defend himself, and I don't believe they have any chance of killing this egg. Fire Spear is hitting on everyone, and that egg will pop. Let's see if they have the damage up, but they do have the detection, and they will kill the invoker in the end. I mean, this Phoenix is just putting in work.
I, I've seen... He hasn't had a single egg killed this game, I don't think. I mean, he had the one that was one hit away, but all of the rest have just been on point. We do see Naga now having the Diffuse Lup, but... Man, they are struggling to find a way to kill this egg. Naga is coming in from the back lines onto this middle lane. I'm wondering if she's trying to pose herself as an illusion. Uses the ensnare, but we do see a turn with the Shivas and everything. The Fire Spirits getting the Naga down to about half HP. We do see the Mystic Flare with the uh, Silence as well. The shield coming out to try and save him, and he might be able to live with the shield. Pops it with like 1 HP. Another Act Campbell should finish him off here. I don't believe he's going to live with the Tree Toss just for good measure. Earth Spike to try and keep this Flesh Golem at bay. But the Tombstone is slowing them all. We do see a toss trying to keep him in place with the Avalanche. But this guy is very, very tanky. Alacrity and Mocha coming in as well. Concussive Shot onto the Abba to try and keep him at bay with the Tornado. EMP onto the Undying here. Who will Yule himself. We do see a Finger of Death on the back line. Killing the Abba. Uh, but now Big Boy Ursus here with his Radiance. Oh my goodness. A missed Ice Wall coming out. But a Concussive Shot is going to hit him. We do see the Undying falling to the damage from the Skyroth Mage. And then the Ursa does fall as well to the damage coming out from the Naga coming in with the Invoker. So a lot of back and forth happening right now. A lot of just kind of even exchanges. Uh, we do see that the Phoenix ended up going for a Kaya and Sanj. So just turned her Kaya into having a little bit of an upgrade. Has the, the Shiva's finished as you saw from the previous fight. And it looks like he will be going back for a Lincoln's, which is quite good. Will stop a lot of things from the Radiant team. Especially if they do get a Sheepstick on either the Invoker or the Skyrath. That would be very good for them. And Radiant is looking to turn the fight that they just want into a Roshan. It looks like they will get it very, very quickly with the Alacrity and all the Riptides coming out. They will get it and they will put it on the Naga. And they're going to try and position this into a Tier 2 Tower push, I would like to believe. What do we have here on Anti-Mage now? He does have his Mantha finish, and it looks like he is going for a Moon Shard first, and then a Butterfly. Um, I don't know why the Moon Shard, but hey, he's the one playing this game, not me. Radiant are position positioning themselves to try and take this Tier 2 tower like I thought they would. Venus going in, just doing a lot of damage to the Naga in advance of any fight, getting her down to about half HP. Concussive Shot and Arcane Bolts to try and keep the Abba at bay. Sunray coming out from Phoenix to try and stall the push as much as they can. Soul Rip coming out to try and heal the Phoenix up to counteract the damage that he was taking from his own Sunray. And Invoker's going to TP out, not wanting to try and do this fight anymore. And it looks like they were trying to stop the split pushing coming out from the Antimage, who looked like he took the Tier 2 tower in the meantime. Do you see a Ensnare plus? <laughs> oh my god. Abba, my friend, where's your shield, bro? Ensnare plus Mystic Flare, you gonna let him get done like that? A lot of damage coming out from the Phoenix again on everyone there. Sunray is gonna get stopped by the Avalanche. Egg comes out very preemptively, and they don't have a way to lock down the person, so this is gonna be a wasted egg. Everyone should be able to disengage freely from that. This is where Radiant needs to really group up, get healed up, and go push a tower. Egg has been their biggest downfall in team fights, and they need to be able to, to proactively work with Egg being on cooldown for the next 90 seconds. Lion went nags. I'm first. He went nags first. Hmm. Uh, huh. I have no words. I, I, I have no words. Skyrath does have a Kai and a BKB now. I really like that item progression actually from Skyrath. I really would like it if he goes a sheep stick next to try and have some sort of lockdown against the Phoenix. He is proactively, excuse me, going for a Lincolns though. So, and he should get the Lincolns before the Skyrath gets the sheep stick. So, see, this is the problem that I have with with players who kind of go this route. Like Ags isn't terrible, but it's not good as a first item on a support lion. <clears throat> so the reason it's it's bad in my opinion is that okay yes he gets a little bit of stats he's up to 1500 hp but he has three empty item slots he's not making use of his backpack what whatsoever 
I mean, this could if he went like a blink, he could have had like a blink. He could have had just more items that fill this up more efficiently. But even though he has a smoke and a, a ward now, those are consumables. They're going to be dealt with very, very quickly. A little bit of a quirky play from the Anti-Mage. Kind of tricking them that the illusion was him. They threw a lot of spells on him. And it, all it's going to kind of be is just a little bit of a mana gain. Invoker does go back for a Yules. Which is okay once he gets got on from the Anti-Mage. Ursa is going back for a blink. And it's really sad to see an Ursa not have a blink until like 35 minutes in. I mean... Ugh. Moonshard is now up onto the Anti-Mage. We do see the Global Concussive Shot now up onto the Skyrath going off on people. Anti-Mage is going to blink aggressively onto the Skyrath. He does pop his BKB very quickly, and he does blink away. We did see the Undying Fall in the back line to the Naga Siren as well, who does have a DD rune. Phoenix is here if he wants to do anything. We do see an Ensnare Shield to counteract it, but a Tornado to counteract that. And we do see the Phoenix get stopped by the Skyrath with the Ancient Seal, the Avalanche Toss combo with the Mystic Flare on top. And I believe this ABBA is going to fall as well. His ulti does get popped, but Ursa jumps in aggressively. This is his first blink showing. He blinks into four people. I mean, he pops in rage, but he is going to die. We do see the Naga chasing down this ABBA as well. I see the global concussive coming in, but the Naga does retreat. Oh, man. Ursa gets a blink and then blinks into four people. Ursa, explain. He's mine. And at this point, there's not really much Anti-Mage can do. He's not at this point where he can really stop all three lanes. I mean, he's not really in it. any of these fights. He was in the very first part of the fight and then got away. Undying is trying his darndest to stop this push. Cataclysm is going to come out and not hit anyone. But this just the raw amount of slows from the defusal and everything is possibly going to kill him. Avalanche as well, but he dodges it with the Yules. A Fodic Shield is keeping him alive as well. Arcane Bolt is not going to finish him off as well. We do see a Hex onto the Anti-Mage. Tries to throw a Dispel Shield, but the net was already on her. Him, excuse me, but the shield does counteract that as well. Abba has done pretty well in this team fight, keeping his people alive. But all they're doing is just delaying the inevitable at this point, I believe. The Rax will fall. And Ursa's not going to be able to do anything as well. Hex does come out onto the Abaddon, but his ulti does pop with the Finger of Death, getting him to full HP. The Ursa does fall as well to the Cold Snap and the Ice Wall. Missed the fucking Mana Void coming out, getting everyone about half HP. And now the Egg comes out. There's the song, but we still we will see Lion fall as well. And everyone else will get away safely. They got what they came for, though. We see a 3 HP range Drax, though. <laughs> Deny it. Come on, Illusion. Just one little tap. Ah, come on. They got what they came for. They got the melee rocks, and then they were able to skedaddle. And without net, I would be interested to see if Dire Team tries to turn around and get a little bit of a push going themselves. We do see Roche coming back in a couple minutes. And Naga is now rocking a heart, so really just trying to stay alive as much as she can in these fights. Checking out buyback status, we do have a buyback on three of the Radiant Heroes in Skyrath, Tiny, and Lion. Dire Team with no buybacks for a little while, all of them missing a handful of gold. So if Radiant Team wins a fight here, I mean, they could just end the game if they get a team wipe. On the flip side, though, we don't see... Meanwhile, we do see an ensnare onto the Ursa. He uses his enrage to try his best, but this is a heart defusal Naga Sunstrike just for BM. I don't even think it gets the kill. Naga finishes him off before it does the damage. And this Ursa is a very sad boy. Might be a team fight brewing up here in the top lane, Tier 2 Tower. Okay, on the top to start it with the Shivas and the Fire Spirit onto the Naga. We do see Antimage fall in the background somewhere by the Invoker. Surprising to see that happen. And where did this happen? Had to have been with Finger of Death, I would assume. Dyer's middle barracks has fallen. Dyer's top tower is under Maybe attack. they were able to get it with like a Lacrity Cold Snap, I would assume, with Finger of Death as well. How much damage is that up to now? So like 400 plus the scepter damage. So that's like 1625. It's not bad. 
I mean, that's reduced by like half, right? So. Tier 2 tower does go down top to the Radiance uh, Naga Illusions. It's so interesting to see these concussive, uh, concussive shots. Global concussive shots just fly across every like 30 seconds. Naga now with a butterfly as well. And she is almost six slotted here. I mean, she still has her treads to swap out if she wants to. I'm assuming she will eventually turn those into BOTs. But I do see a lot of people just forgetting boots and going something else. Uh, tornado almost done onto the air. So, but he is able to blink out in time. Dyer's top shrine is under attack. <laughs> Another concussive shotgun. <laughs> just, just smacks, smacks that undying in the face. He just stood there and took it though. Radiant will finish off the Dyer top shrine there, and Dyer team Dyer's is kind of struggling shrine. here. Phoenix did end up going back for a Yules instead of a Lincoln. I am interested to see that. <laughs> Excuse me. Tiny with a Halberd coming out. Pretty good against the Ursa. I mean, I think the Ursa's struggling as is, but... Invoker did go back for a BKB as well. I think that is quite good. I still think they need a Sheepstick to really have hard lockdown on this Anti-Mage later. Um, I am worried if the Radiant team don't clear clean out this game and finish it off, that Dire team does have a very good chance of, of winning the game. Um, Anti-Mage is Anti-Mage, and he's going to do his Anti-Mage thing. Phoenix is very big, and Ursa... As much as he has struggled this game, it's still an Ursa, where if he gets on top of someone, can lock them down once he gets a Basher up. He is going a BKB first, but I would be shocked to see him not go back for the Basher afterward. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Abba does have the Solar Crest with two Bracers up now. Going back for an AC next, just trying to get as many ores as he can for his team. I think that's very good. Undying looks like he will be going a mech, very late mech. I'm assuming he will turn that into a Greaves. Lion at this point does now have a blink coupled up with his Ags. We do see the Skywrath getting ready to buy a Lincolns, which he will pop right there. Invoker did go back for a blink as well. So having the blink and the BKB very, very strong for him. And Naga did put her... Manta in her backpack for the ages. I think that it would have been much better if she put her treads in the backpack and she did just swap them out. Thank you for listening to me, Naga. We do see a fight brewing here in the top lane. Naga just walking uphill with her 3000 HP and she's going to throw the song out. Caught four people. Let's see what they do with this. Cataclysm is coming out. Does she cancel the song in time? She doesn't. Mistimed. We do see a lot of stuff coming out. The eggs is going to come out. Anti-Mage does blink in onto the tiny. He's probably going to throw his mana void out. He's not going to be able to get it off with the Ancient Shield coming out from the Sky right there. He does blink in again in the back line. Kills off the line very quickly. Tiny is dead. Lion is dead. Undying does fall on the Dire team. But Dire is winning this fight right now. And Snare comes out onto the Phoenix. Who is getting very low. Riptide does come out as well from the Naga. Is going to finish him off. He will dodge a lot of damage. The Invoker from the Yules. I do see another mana void getting canceled. He is chasing the the... Skyrath here and is getting juked a lot. This Invoker will fall on the back line to the Naga again. I think it's a matter of time before this Skyrath falls. And he will end up falling. But a uh, little bit of tunnel vision, I would want to say. Buyback from Phoenix coming in, and they are going to use their Glyph. Radiant did lose all the rest of their team, and it's just a Naga up here who doesn't have that much mana. Tombstone does come out, and I think this Naga is going to fall. He's going to be throwing away his agents, and they're probably going to kill him again. He doesn't have a song. He, he has song in five seconds. Can he live for five more seconds? Song will come up now with the mirror image. Song does come out, and he should be able to get away and does TP out in time. So, I mean, that's okay if you're the Dire team. I think Anti-Mage could have done a lot more if he wouldn't have tunnel visioned the Skyrath as much, but they don't lose the tier three tower, although they did have to use their Phoenix buyback, which is actually a very big deal considering that for the Dire team, um, he is very high on their net worth chart. Rocking in third the entire game right now, just behind the Anti-Mage. And Anti-Mage is catching up very quickly to this Naga now that he's kind of gotten some items in place. He is still behind her by about 2,000 gold, but at this point in the game, that's very negligible. 
Antimage does blink in very aggressively onto the Lion, who does throw out his Ghost Scepter, and he gets his ulti canceled so many times by the Avalanche. Not going to be quite enough. We'll finish him off, but that is a BKB charge just for a Lion. I believe that was his 10 second charge, and yes, it was just for a Lion. Not sure if that's worth it for him. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Ghost Scepter kept him alive for so long, and the Avalanche on top made him really commit that BKB charge. So that was, you know, having them get something out of nothing there. Check buyback status up again. We do see Naga having buyback, probably the most key one for the Radiant team. Invoker is not going to have it for about another 400 gold. Anti-Mage does have it as well, so on both sides we do see them having their big course having it. Meanwhile, Invoker does blink aggressively, misses the Tornado and the Ampia completely, and they might turn on this now. Ursa does blink in and uses Enrage, but they have no detection. The Sentry comes out very, very late. Anti-Mage blinks over, but doesn't quite get over the cliff, so that's going to be a wasted job for him. But he blinks in aggressively again. They might be able to go on this, and they don't. Just a Tiny and an Invoker. It might have been difficult to kill him. And, Invoker, and the Anti-Mage blinks in aggressively again. The Tiny does try and counteract it by tossing him, but he pops his BKB on the Anti-Mage. So does the Invoker. Tries to throw out a Cataclysm. Does the decent amount of damage to the Phoenix. But he has a Phytic Shield on him. He should be fine. Still has his egg caught up. Invoker does Yules. And he will be able to get out with his Blink Tiger. Mr. Claire and Finger of Death going to wipe out a couple people in this fight. Skyrath and the Undying go down. Egg does come out. And the Tornado comes across to try and stop the... Abba from doing anything. We do see a cold snap as well on the back line and a key to chaos meteor on the top. Song does stop the anti mage as well. Are they going to be able to finish off this anti mage? About a third HP. And this Naga is not timing her song correctly. Finger of Death does finish off the Ursa. Abba is going to have his Bridal Time popped, but he should end up falling in the end. Cold snap and Hex coming out to keep him locked in place and snare as well, and he will fall. I will say, as as good as this Naga has done, um, just kind of doing her best farming, she has not done the best at timing her songs, turning them off to, to combo with certain pieces. We've seen Cataclysm, which has a lot of warning before it will hit, and hasn't turned it off the couple times that I've seen it. I saw Avalanche coming out onto someone that was slept, and just a lot of miscommunication maybe, I'm not sure. We do see Anti-Mage and Naga still having their buybacks, and Invoker has her, his buyback now too, so. And Undying, you just walked in the danger zone, my friend. That was like four hits. AM does blink in aggressively onto the backline, onto the Invoker. Invoker's at about a fourth HP, does throw his Radial Deafening Blast, and I think they should disengage here, but Anti-Mage does pop the BKB from the Invoker, and they might try and re-engage now. Invoker's still farming here with about a fourth HP. He does blink away and Ghost Walk away to safety, so. Lion is scouting and might get routed himself. Hex does come out early with an Earth Spike over the top, I would assume. Tiny does blink in as well. Avalanche on top. Cataclysm as well, but he is going to BKB and blink away. So, again, BKB is being forced by both sides. Very good for each team there. Intimage now down to a 7 second BKB. Invoker is down to a 7 second BKB as well. So, it will be very interesting to see what happens in the very next fight. Tornado does come across with a, with an EMP on top as well. Tornado and uh, Avalanche on top, excuse me, onto the Anti-Mage, but a Phytic Shield is going to keep him alive. And now Tiny is in the danger zone. Anti-Mage blinks back in, gets a lot of damage, and Rage on the Ursa as well. Going to finish off the Tiny. We just see a Finger of Death doing a lot of damage onto the Dire team, but Mana Void is going to finish off the line himself. And we see a lot of people getting low on the Radiant team. Invoker's going to have to pop his BKB again, but the raw attack damage, not going to be enough. He does Ghost Walk away, and now he's out of position. Is he going to be able to blink away again? Cold Snap to stop it, and the Diffusal is going to make it so he can't blink away. And this might be able to be uh, forcing an Anti-Mage buyback. Song is going to keep all three of them locked in place. Anti-Mage does buy out, and they really need to disengage now on the Radiant team. Mystic Flare is going to finish off the ABBA, and Skyrath has gone a little bit too far. You're probably dead, my friend. Undying does fall, but now the Anti-Mage is here. It pops his BKB, and they're trying to find the Invoker. They will finish him off. He does have buyback, but the key thing here is if they can catch this Naga. Will they catch the Naga? A lot to go through here. He has Radiance. He has Butterfly. He has Heart. 
He has another song in 50 seconds. He is just juking, driving, trying to run away, missing all these attacks. They're trying to chase. Will they get him? Mirror image to try and stall the, the kill. Antimate is getting very low half HP, but the Naga has been run dry of his mana, and Mana Void is going to finish him off. Huge kill by the Dire team to be able to finish him off. Meanwhile, they do have the buyback on the Naga and the Invoker, as well as the Skyra, so all three cores do have their buybacks. Only person with their buyback on the Dire team, though, is the Undying. They basically have it on the Abaddon and about 20 gold, so that's going to be about like 5 seconds from now. But they don't have it on the Phoenix for another minute. They don't have it on the Anti-Mage for another 7 minutes. And uh, they don't have it on Ursa for about 300 gold, so... They're really trying to transition this into a push, and I think they're going to force some buybacks here. I mean, if they don't buy back, they're going to get two racks, if not all three. Naga does buyback in advance. Finger of Death to try and slow them down gets the Ursa to about half HP, and they will use their fort as well, and they will have to back. So Naga does buy back there, but they don't even lose a tier 3 tower, so they keep their shrine safe for now. But Dyer has a huge win condition now. They get one more kill on Naga, and this game is probably over. Antimage should be able to get this Roche here. They do have Song up, but she did just BOT to the bottom lane. She is trying to run back by the looks of it. And meanwhile, excuse me, she is actually going to stop and farm. So it looks like they have no knowledge of this, and this will be a free Roche for the Dire team. And this is a huge deal because Antimage does not have a buyback. So getting the Aegis on him is absolutely massive. It will be interesting to see which item he puts in his stash for this. It looks like he will put his Vlads there. I would have been fine with him putting his Battle Fury there, to be honest. He will take the Aegis. And this is Cheese and Refresher as well, so Phoenix will take that Refresher or Refresh Orb. Does have an Octarine Core now, wow. Intimage does take the Cheese, puts it in his stash, that will be what he swaps out whenever he loses that Aegis, if he loses the Aegis. And at this point, it, it's, it's a neck and neck game, like both sides have a key win condition. Both cores don't have buybacks, and I'm talking about Antimage and Naga here. Lines drawn from the Skyrath saying, we need to push these side lanes out, we already have the mid lane racks down. Antimage is searching with a double damage rune. Will expire very shortly. Invoker and Naga trying their best to split push these side lanes. And they do have Phoenix TP out. So Dyer needs to understand that they don't have their one of their key members in their fight there. And should leave and, and group up again before they do anything else. Invoker is meanwhile searching with Ghostwalk. Might find something onto the Ursa here. Ends up not trying to be a part of it. Trying not to take any huge risks here. And Invoker does have a an ultimate orb now, but it looks like he might be going for Lincoln's having the Ring of Health in his backpack already. Intimation might be trying to make a play onto this Invoker. Does have Abyssal. Does blink in, but not quite close enough before the Ghost Walk comes out. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Lincoln's is now up onto the Invoker. Lion looks like he is going for an Aeon Disc, which should serve him quite well. We do see Abba getting quite low. Sunstrike over the top will finish him off. And that's a dead Abba for 90 seconds, so that ain't nothing. Ursa still doesn't have a Basher, and it looks like he has no intention to get one. And he's going to be going Akaya Yasha. Uh... I don't think that's going to really do much for him. I think that if Asher would be way better at this point for him, but... And man, these Naga Illusions do so much at this point in the game. The change to Riptide is actually so insane. Tiny does have a an Orchid now. I love that item choice coming out from him. If he can get it onto the Anti-Mage after he's used Manta, I mean, that's absolutely massive. We do see the mech finally coming out onto the Undying, and he is actually going for that Greaves like I thought he would. We'll see if he gets that before the end of the game. Phoenix actually has a Refresher Orb as well now, so he has three eggs if he wants to use them. With this setup, I would have loved to have ha to, ha to have him have a, a Sheepstick. Can you imagine throwing out a Sheepstick and an egg three times in a fight? Holy mother. 
Tornado and EMP coming out onto the Anti Mage Illusions, but it's just an illusion, so really just trying to clean that up so they can start pushing out this bottom lane again. A little bit of a lull from both sides right now, but both sides are very uh, wary of making some sort of risk that makes them just lose the game. Both sides still don't have buybacks um, on their main player, Anti Mage, for another two minutes, three and a half minutes for the Naga. And you can even see just these two mirror image illusions. Anti Mage can't do anything against them. Naga even taking the, the ancient beast from him throws out a good game. And it looks like Radiant is trying to get a little bit of a push going onto this bottom lane. They don't have the Skyrath here. I would like for them to wait until he gets there. A ping coming up from Lion Sand. Get your ass up here. Tornado with EMP coming over the top onto the Phoenix, but he will not fall from the Tornado in time. We do see the Tiny blinking aggressively with the Avalanche on a three. Cataclysm coming out. Not going to hit really anyone other than the Phoenix. He will throw out his Fire Spears and the Egg. We do see a Halberd coming out, and we do see Antimage blinking in the back line with his Abyssal onto the Lion. Not the best choice. Egg does go off, finishing off the Tiny. No buyback on him. We do see the Song coming out, trying to stop everyone, saying, get out, get out, get out. He does blink out. BKB and a TP coming out from the Skyrath. The Lion will fall as a Sacrificial Lamb, and the Dire kills two there. Not the best. Uh, Tiny admitting his mistake, throwing out a my bad there. Yeah, not not the best initiation there. Skyrath wasn't there. Blinks in. I mean, he got a four man avalanche, but like they weren't in a position to follow that up whatsoever. And now the Dire have a huge opening. There's 60 seconds without either of them, and neither of them have have buyback. Although the Aegis is claimed there, so he is going to need to put the cheese into his inventory. Still hasn't put something there yet, but I'm assuming he will. Naga Siren now with two butterflies and a Scotty, putting a Manta and Diffusal in her inventory. I would have preferred to see her go something like, uh, like a Necro 3 to be able to push waves as much as you can. We do see Phoenix getting to about half HP with the Ancient Seal, but he is going to use it off. Cold Snap does come over the top, and he will blink to dodge the Ursa coming in with Blink and BKB and Enrage. Another fort coming out from the Radiant team, and this is looking like a scary time for the Radiant team. We have five people pushing down the lane. We see the Tombstone coming up aggressively already. He does get Abyssal. The Skyrath on the back line does fall to the Mana Void over the top. He does buy back immediately already. He'll definitely blast from the Invoker with the Cataclysm, but he is going to... The Phoenix is going to dodge a lot of the damage with his Yules. Dodges the Mystic Flare as well. Ursa did blink and aggressively. Doesn't find anyone, though. And now Phoenix needs to get away. He throws out another egg, just keeping the Radiant team away so that the Dire team can finish off the mid racks. And Invoker does buy a Refresh Orb and the Will and does activate it. Tiny does blink in with the Avalanche on top, but they're not able to really do anything. Tornado from Invoker with another Cataclysm over the top. Chaos Meteor, but Borrow Time is going to come out onto the ABBA. Concussive Shot and Radial Deafening Blast and Earth Pack coming over the top. Mystic Flare, but the Borrow Time is just soaking up a lot of the damage. Still at about two thirds HP. We do see the blink in from the Invoker with the Ice Wall on top. We do see another Refresher coming out from the Phoenix. Is he going to throw out another egg? He does. We do see the BKB. Getting a lot of damage from the AM onto the Tiny, and he will fall 90 seconds without Tiny. No buyback on him, on him either, and the egg will pop again. We do see Megas coming out from the Radiant team. A lot of split pushing coming in. Radiant team gets Megas on onto the Dire team. The whole time, just split pushing, getting those Megas down, and now Dire in a predicament. I mean, they have the teams that defend against Megas. They do have the Anti Mage. They do have a Phoenix, and he's able to defend as well. And I guess this is the part where the Radiance will come into effect for the Ursa. But hell, he could have gotten that now instead of first item. Ursa now with an Octarine Core. This is the most interesting item build I've seen from an Ursa in quite a long time. Again, we're at a point where the game is completely even. It's almost an hour in, and it's a 1k gold lead, so literally nothing. It's almost like the gold league got a plus one armor in the next patch. Like, it's literally nothing. See how this game ends in the end. I mean, this is a nail biter. I mean, this could still go either way. Naga doesn't have buyback for 400 gold. And the snare on the top for the Phoenix here throws out a Shiva's, and he does not have another egg for five seconds. We do see Lion blink in, uses his Ghost Scepter. We see a huge fight breaker in here. Ursa does use his Enrage. We see a Mystic Flare on the top. Cataclysm over the top as well. Gonna do some damage. Li the Lion does fall, and the Tiny is dead for two minutes as well, falling to the Anti-Mage. Song does try and disengage. They might be able to chase on this, though. Phoenix is gonna come out a little bit, pops the mirror image from the Naga, and we'll just back up here. So Dire doing their best to just hold it off. <laughs> and dying almost falling to the pure damage of the illusions. Tornado does come out. 
panics a little bit, but dodges it with the Yules. Rado definitely blasts with the Ursa, does jump in with the Sudden Rage, gets into shield immediately. Anti Mage does bank in over the top, causes a Ghost Scepter from the Skyroth to come out, tries to mana void him, but it is going to be blocked by the Lincoln Sphere. Doing his best, gets the bash onto the Invoker, and he, he will die. He does have buyback out though. A lot of in interesting things going in the back line. Naga will fall. Being there in between four heroes, didn't have Song for 25 seconds. Maybe just overstepped his boundaries. Luckily, he did farm enough before he died, getting the buyback. And Dyer does have a chance in this game. They got Megas, but they have a chance here. They are going to be pushing down mid lane. We do see the, uh, the Anti-Mage blinking in, or rather, BOTing in, excuse me. And Anti-Mage has... Uh, a divine rapier so he's going all in here this is going to be the final fight of the game here we will not see the undying here buyback's coming out from the invoker and the naga and anti mage does immediately blink away tornado trying to scout some out doesn't hit on anyone abba does have that ac up now don't know exactly how long he's had that had that but dire is going to be trying to go back for another rush I don't believe that Radiant are going to get here in time because that thing is falling very quickly. They are trying to get there, but it's going to not be quite in time. Mirror Image does come in to try and get a little bit of scouting going on. Not going to do too much. Anti-Mage does get the Aegis and the Cheese, putting his bio, uh, his Battle Fury rather into his, his backpack as well as has as his BOT. So completely agree with this and fights he's not needing that battle fury at all to do what he wants to do. Who ended up getting the refresher? I want to say it's Phoenix again. Yes it is. Phoenix at this point has kind of stalled with his item progression, but at this point he's kind of maxed out. He could replace the veil with something else like a sheep stick, which I think would be very, very good. Um, but he is kind of stalled out a little bit since he had all those items. Still rocking third on the net worth, so he has done uh, he has done a good job to not fall off sooner. I mean, it's an hour long game; you can only go so far with your item progression. But he, he has done a very good job at taking his early game advantage and turning that into being a, a force throughout the entire game. Ursa with that plus six hundred range Earth Shock talent is so insane. Skyrath uh, ended up going back for a BOT2 instead of going for other items. I don't like that at all. I'm fine with BOT1, but I don't personally think there's any point of him getting a BOT2 before getting something else. Um, I mean, the Lincolns and the Ghost Scepter has helped him live in a fight, but I think he probably could have just gone a, an Aeon Disc instead. I haven't seen him use the Lincolns on his teammates at all, so I think Aeon Disc would have probably served him a little bit better. Pretty sure he had Arcane Boots earlier, so he could have just split that up for the Aeon Disc as well. Dire 2 doing a pretty good job of, of defending against these Megas. Still have both their Tier 4 Towers up. And they do have their Fortification up as well. So does the Radiant team, but at this point, Naga doesn't have buyback. So if Dire team kills Naga, this game is essentially over. Like, Naga and Invoker both fall back at the same time. So, I mean, if they kill both those heroes, the game is over. There's no chance that they have... They have no chance to be able to defend against that without their Invoker and their uh, Naga. We do see Anti-Mage having buyback as well. So, even though they are against Megas, I still think Dyer's in the driver's seat here. I think really the only chance that the Radiant has to just effectively seal this game is if they are able to catch the Dire team out with a song away from their base and have the rest of the Radiant team go attack the base. And this this would have to be away from the throne because the sleep would, would make it so you can't hit the throne. So they have to catch someone maybe like here, Cataclysm for scouting, gonna get the Phoenix to about half HP, Greaves to kind of heal them up a little bit though. But as I was saying, the song has to come out like here, here, just somewhere away from the base to be able to uh, have everyone else sneak in through the back with like alacrity onto the invoker just anything to try and get the towers down if they can but they do have a fort to counteract that though that's the problem if they if they did get that hail mary of a play the miracle play off they still have fortification to counteract it game now at the 63 minute mark and i even though they're against megas i think it's the dyer's game to lose not only do they have buyback on their anti-mage, but they have it on Phoenix as well. 
And they're undying. And that will mean a lot of tombstones coming out. And you see all of these waves getting cleared absolutely immediately. The 600 range Earthshock spam uh, with the Kaya and Sanj. That way he can use it more and more with the Octarine. Maybe he was like, I know we're going against Mega, so I'm going to get Radiance first. I'm going the Kaya and Sanj, uh, the Kaya and Yasha. I'm going the Octarine so I can spam my Earthshock every 3.75 seconds. Still has Tranquil Boots, though. And Dire Team is ready for this fight. I mean, they're being aggressive. Antimage blinks in, immediately walks away, not getting in the range. Global Concussive Shot coming out as well to kind of keep them at bay. And what is Naga doing right now? Still rocking two Butterflies and a Scotty. In my opinion, I don't think the Radiance is doing much for the Naga anymore. I think that he should probably replace that with another item. They already have Megas. We do see Dire Courier getting killed, and that looked like an MKB getting ready to be purchased by someone. Abin now going with the Vlad strat, or with the Aura strat, has a Vlad. Antimage at this point has money for buyback if he ends up dying. Aegis does get exp uh, expired. So if he does die, he does have money for another Rapier, but his Courier is dead, so he wouldn't be able to get to it. At this point, Radiant can't really go in their base. I mean, they're stalling time. The buybacks from Naga and the Invoker are going to be back for two minutes. So, I mean, if you're the Dire team, I think you're okay with that. You've won the past couple team fights pretty easily. Phoenix has done such a superb job this, this game that you have to just continue expecting it out of him at this point. Tornado coming over the top will nick the Abba there. Ursa does blink in with an Urshock just to try and keep them back. We do see the first tier 4 tower fall in the meantime. Radiant team getting a little bit antsy here. They still have a minute and a half without their buybacks. Phoenix dies in just kind of getting damage onto the creeps there. We do see an Ursa blink in with his Enrage and BKB. Aeon Disc and Ghost Scepter is popped by the Lion who does end up falling to the Urshock. And that's 90 seconds. Does have buyback and Skyrath falls as well. Does immediately buy back, and he will be OT's in. Cataclysm is not going to do really much at all. And Radiant Team is kind of panicking a little bit here. Undying kind of trying to keep the Skyrath at bay. We see information going on. Information going on. Tornado trying to make it so that the Invoker doesn't die, but he does fall two minutes without buyback there. Or one minute, rather. Two minutes if he doesn't buy back. A Mana Void does come over the top. Skyrath just die back. Antimage is locking the Naga in place. Gets the song up, but the BKB is there. Will blink in. Does he get another bash? He does it, and the sleep goes off. He is going to try and TP out. Will they be able to stop it? No, they will not. He does get the TP out. Ancient is falling at about 80% HP. Invoker will have buyback in about 30 seconds, but Skyrath is dead without buyback for the full 100 seconds. So this game is really coming down to the wire. Dire still has their fortification. And that fight was just very, very split. Another Rapier coming out onto the Anti-Mage, so really just going all in at this point. Finger of Death coming off over the top onto the Phoenix, who was hexed, but an Abyssal Blade is going to lock the line down in place, and that's a dieback on him as well. A little bit aggressive by him, trying to get a cheeky play, but that's one of the tankiest people in the entire game right now on the Dire team. I think it is 2,800 health. A couple 2,000s, but Abba maybe 2,450, not even. You literally try to do that on the tankiest person, Lion, and that just... That's another person you don't have for a, for 100 seconds. And Dyer's going to push down mid. And Voker's going to have to buy back here. And they're still going to be without Skyra. They're still going to be without their line. So they, they're missing a lot of lockdown. I do fear the Radiant might not be able to defend against this. Antimage going directly for tier 4s. We do see the buyback coming out from Invoker. Avalanche over the top coming out. The Undying has already put down the Tombstone. Tornado with the MP over the top. Cataclysm as well. Another Cataclysm with the Refresh Orb. Antimage will fall to that. Radio Deafening the Blast, keeping the Phoenix in place with the Ensnare. He uses a Refresher, uses a Yules again. The Anti-Mage's BOT's 
does get canceled. No, never mind. He does get in. Another egg coming out over the top with about a 30 HP coming down. The song does come out to try and keep them out of place. The egg will pop onto the onto the tiny, excuse me, and to the invoker, but the song is keeping them in place. The, the Phoenix is diving over the top. I do hear a refresher on someone. I think it was the invoker, or rather the uh, Naga. A BKB comes out from the anti mage, going to kill the, the tiny who does have buyback, uses it immediately, and the wow, the BKB was used, I believe, on the anti mage to kill that invoker, and he's down for two minutes. Will the radiant team be able to stop this? It looks like the Naga is trying to go for a trade, going in immediately for the ancient. This is going to be a base race here. Will he finish it off? The radiant base is locked in place. They do have four. Another egg comes out. Naga is trying to go for the trade, but the four comes out on the dire team. Egg is going to stop everyone. Howard coming out on the anti mage. Radiant now uses their fortification. This is coming down to the wire. The Abbot is making it, so he can't really do much. It's going to be very close. I think Dire has this radiant. Throwing down to about a fourth HP. Dire team about the same, but Dire is going to come out with the win. Very close there in the end. Wow, what a game. What a game. Very, very close. And this was a five stack versus a five stack. Very, very close by both sides there. Oh my goodness. Wow. I thought for a second that Anti Mage's uh, BOT got canceled, but it was actually on a creep wave back. I think that the other BOT that I saw that got canceled might have been from someone else, else if I wasn't mistaken. So, um,. Good that Anti Mage was actually able to BOT Zen. If not, they might have been able to hold the Radiant team because Anti Mage would have either had to blink all the way there or he would have had to de defend against Mega Creeps. And if he blinks all the way toward the fight, he's not going to get there before the Naga TPs back, uh, or TPs rather aggressively toward the Dire base. In which case, I think his BOTs would have probably been off cooldown by then, but very close. I mean, the graph, it may look very topsy turvy, but at this point, this is, uh, this is experience. The net worth never really got. And the Radiant's favor by more than about 6,000. Dire, yeah, it got to about 12,000, but that was over an hour in. And at that point, like, who are we kidding? Very crazy, crazy game. I really didn't know who was going to come out on top in this game. But Dire does end up pulling it out of their asses.